Hey everyone and welcome to Bottle Blonde Gal. My name is Christina. Today I thought it'd be fun to take a look back at a classic Seventeen magazine. This issue is from February 1997. You may recognize the cover from the film Cruel Intentions, which is one of my all-time favorite films. I've even seen the musical twice. I'll include a clip here, if YouTube allows me, of the scene I'm referring to. I know how to alleviate menstrual cramps, thank you very much. Shut up and turn to page 64. So this was known as the love issue, which is perfect for cruel intentions. One article is, does he like you? Seven ways to tell. Quiz, is he trustworthy? How we fell in love, real couples talk, playing it smart, girls who refuse to act dumb, and get the hair you want. This issue, of course, features the beautiful Jennifer Love Hewitt. So let's get started. Now I'm not gonna show every single page because then we'd be here forever, but I thought I'd show some standout articles. This section is the mail, and it includes write-in letters from readers. Of course, they had to use snail mail back then, email, which was, of course, for geeks as Sebastian so kindly puts it. I think you should tell her you love her. Are you kidding me? Mrs. Caldwell will have me shot if I go anywhere near her. She doesn't have her own phone, and I don't even know her email address. Ronald, email is for geeks and pedophiles. Be romantic. Write her another letter. So this section is where readers submit their letters and other things. Uh, about what's on their mind and things they liked about the issues and, and how it helped them in their everyday life. So I found this one kind of interesting. I feel is, um, is fitting for Pride Month. So let's go ahead and look at this one. I accidentally read my friend's diary and found out she was bisexual. At first, I wasn't sure what to do. I was even kind of scared. I finally confronted her. To my surprise, she started crying and begged me not to tell anyone because she didn't want to lose her friends or be attacked in the hallways. After reading It's Who I Am, which is an article from November, I rushed over to her house and showed it to her. She still doesn't want people to know, but she is more confident knowing she's not alone. Thanks so much. It's letters like that that, um, that show what an impact these magazines had on us. Growing up, I subscribed to mostly teen, but I would occasionally um, get Seventeen Magazine. But <laughs> towards the end, my parents made me choose between Seventeen or Teen Magazine because they got kind of expensive when you have both issues. So I chose teen, but I did occasionally uh, read the Seventeen Magazines as well. But it, it's nice to see what an impact the magazines had on on the young readers. Ooh, this one sounds interesting. Let's read the been caught stealing. Your story of shoplifting busted, voice November, reminded me of myself. I started stealing when I was 12, I'm now 15, and I stole pretty steadily until last summer when I got caught. It was scary being arrested and fingerprinted. Also being led out to the store handcuffed and everyone staring at me was extremely humiliating. I'm still dealing with community service and theft deterrent classes, and I can't go back to that store until I'm 18. I haven't stolen anything in three months. It's not worth it. From Amanda in Oregon. I actually had, um, that reminds me, I had some friends in junior high who got, that got caught stealing at um, Claire's, and <laughs> Yep, they were definitely busted. It's a small store, so it's not surprising. This section by far was my favorite growing up, which is the embarrassing moments. So let's go ahead and look at some of these write-ins. I was convinced that all of these were true, but now looking back, of course, I have a feeling that a lot of them were probably made up just to make it into the issue. So let's go with the, the main one, slippery smooch. Slippery smooch. My boyfriend and I were on the couch and he asked me to French kiss him. I'd never kissed a guy before and I was nervous. I leaned over and we kissed and I guess I forgot to swallow gross because we pulled away and there was a ton of drool around our, our mouths. 
Of course, I blamed it on him saying, ew, why do you slobber? Once I remembered to swallow, our second kiss was much better. Oh, I was hoping that it was this featured one. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, here it is. Kiss or die. Or kiss or dis. Sorry, I can't read today. We were playing truth or dare in the hot tub at a party. And I was dare to kiss this guy. I was standing beside the tub. So I leaned over the edge towards him and he leaned toward me. But just as our lips touched, he jumped back in the water. There I was leaning over the pool with my eyes closed when I heard, he doesn't want to kiss you. Right then I fell into the pool head first. I've never been so embarrassed so much for a meaningful first kiss. Oh, that's kind of sad. I think what I'm going to do also is maybe upload some of these some of these pages to my Instagram in case you want to read them. But there's also a great website that I'm going to link below that lets you check these magazines out for free. It's by the same company that does the, the Wayback Machine for the internet. So this issue, it looks like this was around the time that Romeo and Ju Juliet came out which I love that film growing up. I had the biggest crush on Leonardo DiCaprio, but Jesus, who did I not have a crush on? Here we've got Star Style. Drew Barrymore and Claire Danes are true Mew Mew addicts. Drew modeled the spring 96 collection above. And when, I'm gonna butcher this. When Musica dropped in as wardrobe consultant for Romeo and Juliet, Claire caught the Mimi bug, too. We spotted her wearing one of Musica's sheer red dresses at the recent Hollywood premiere. Mew Mew, who knew? So Mew Mew is a brand, and I believe it's an offshoot of Prada, if memory serves correctly. But I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Correct me if you know. But Mimi is an expensive brand to be putting in a teen magazine. I'm surprised. Making of a model. Oh, let's look at this. Golden rules. When in easy do-it-yourself style that looks great for every day and night. At a recent spring show, designer Vivian Tam sent models down the catwalk decked out in gold combs. How can you do it? Make a high ponytail or a bun. Crimping is optional. Secure the elastic. Next, slide several gold combs on top and around the sides of the head. Voila. And that's the look they're referring to. <laughs> JC Pity cover model contest. Could this be you? And JC Penny is no longer around. I would have so entered this if I saw it. I probably did. I would not be surprised. I was entering everything when it came to these magazines. I was definitely an aspiring model back in the day. I I even joined one of those modeling schools. Um, I joined Barbizon, which would be advertised in these magazines, and that's how I found out about it. If you want to hear more about that, feel free to let me know. So it's probably not going to be the easiest to read some of these articles at the way I've got it tilted. I'm still working on the logistics, so bear with me. Ooh, let's read some of these, these articles. So let's see. So this looks like an advice column. Let's start with my dad's gay. Whenever friends ask me why my parents divorced, I tell them it's because my dad cheated on my mom. This is only the half truth. My dad is gay. I hate holding in the truth and I want to tell my friends. Any ideas of how to do it? And they wrote back, I understand your urge to be honest about something so major and important in your life. I also admire it. By telling your friends the truth, you'll not only make yourself feel better, but also wake other people up to the fact that stuff like this is happening out there. And a lot of people are gay. In fact, 
an estimated 6 to 14 million kids in the U.S. have a gay parent. Your dad is still your dad, and you still love and respect him, and you're still the same person you always were. Next time the subject comes up, after you say your dad cheated, add, actually, it's kind of a long story, but he's gay. As for the people you've already told he cheated, next time any gay issue comes up, try saying, remember I told you my dad cheated on my mom? Actually, he's gay. The way you say this will do a lot to determine how others take it. If you're cool and casual about it, the people you tell will be less likely to, to think it's a big deal. In fact, the more mature and open-minded among them probably won't judge you. And they may respect you even more for being so upfront and for trusting them with the major part of your, your life. The mom of one of my high school friends is a lesbian. And once we all got over the initial shock of finding out, we realized she was the exact same cool, smart mom as before. In case you do encounter someone who treats you like a huge shocking or treats it like a huge shocking deal, remind them it's not making your dad a serial killer or something. He's, tr he's just in love with another man. If your hesitancy to tell people your dad's gay comes from your own mixed feelings, give yourself some time to come to terms with his homosexuality. Talk to your mom and your dad or another adult who can help you find some sort of support group to get you to the point. That's actually great advice. I'm really impressed with the magazine and the fact that they gave out such great advice even back then. This is why I've been a long supporter of Seventeen Magazine as well as Teen Magazine. And this is the Is He Crush Worthy? Wow. <sighs> Oh my God, Vanilla Fields. This is so embarrassing, but I used to wear this perfume and I would get it at my local Albertsons. And I finally stopped wearing it because a friend of a friend said, what's that smell? It, they concluded that it was me and they said, it smells like a grandma perfume. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, <laughs> but Yes, I wore Vanilla Fields because I was a dork. I love that 90s lip. True romance. Seven signs he likes you. Let's see what some of the signs are. He gives you the third degree. He stares at you. He totally teases you. He lends you his prized possessions. He seems to be tailing you. He suddenly turns speechless. He asks your friends about you. Funny story, when I was in college, I really liked this guy and he um, saw that I had a Sonic Youth CD. And he asked me if I had a specific album of theirs called Daydream Nation. And I, of course, lied and said I did. And he asked if he could borrow it. And so I went to this, the, um, I think, I can't remember the name of it, but I went to the CD, a CD store right then and there and bought Daydream Nation just so I could loan it to him because I had such a crush on him. I'm still friends with him to this day. True story. That's another guy I had a huge crush on back in the day. All throughout elementary school, it was all about JTT. I 
Uh, the infamous lip licks. So I want to show you one last thing before we conclude, and that is the, the back of the magazine. So this is where they would have all their ads, and here's the Barbizon <laughs> ad that that drew me in. So um, I might show some of my modeling photos if you're interested, but yes. Yeah, so, but this I read every inch of this magazine back in the day. Whenever I got a teen or seventeen magazine, I would look at every ad and I would read every contest, and and I would actually applied to, <laughs> to some of them. Like there was this one that was, um, they were looking for the next Got Milk model and I applied to that one embarrassingly and, and submitted a very cringe photo. Well, I've officially run out of space on my phone. So this concludes our look back at the Seventeen Magazine from February, 1997. I will link the issue in my, either my Dropbox or I'll pin a comment or something like that as to where you can check out the magazine for yourself online for free. So you don't have to spend 16 bucks on eBay like me. <laughs> have a good one.